Hi, it's Tristan with Git Kraken. Today I'm going to show you how to download Git on your Windows machine. The first thing you're going to want to do is navigate to Git SCM. This is your resource for all official Git documentation. Once you're here, you'll notice a computer image with the option to download for Windows. Select that button. From here, there are a variety of ways that you can download Git for your Windows machine. I'm going to use the option to download using 32 or 64 bit. You can determine whether or not your machine is 32 or 64 bit with a quick search of your settings. My operating system is 64 bit. So I'm going to select the 64 bit Git for Windows setup. This will start the download process, and depending on your connection, could take anywhere between, I don't know, three to five minutes. Great, now that the file has downloaded, go ahead and select Open File. We're gonna be presented with a series of setup questions, most of which it'll be totally fine for us to just accept the default settings, with one exception that I'll call out, as we go through it. Okay, adjusting the name of the initial branch is the setting that I mentioned that we would change. You'll wanna select override the default branch name for new repositories and type main. The technology industry has recently shifted from your initial branch being called master to now being called main. For more context and information as to why that was such an important industry change and why people have adjusted to main, I'll leave a link in the description below. Continue onward. Once we get here, you'll notice there's an install option instead of going next. We're almost finished now. Hit install. Excellent. Once we get to this point, I'm going to deselect view release notes and hit finish. Congratulations. You should now have Git installed on your Windows machine. But you're not quite done. Before you can start working in your first Git project, you're going to want to do something called configure Git. Now it's important to configure Git because Git associates or wants to associate all the changes and commits made in a project with a username. It wants to know who did what in a project. And you won't be able to use Git to its fullest capacity until you've configured it. In order to do that, go to this book icon and it'll take you to the Git book. The Git book is your resource for all things Git. So whether you have a question about branching, merging, making commits, this is a good first resource to go to. Now it does have a reputation for being a little bit dense, can be daunting to start reading at first, but uh, I would encourage you to just kind of go through at your own pace and things will start to make sense as you play around with the system. Go to 1.6, first time Git setup. And you can probably see what I mean. There's just a lot of content here that can be a little bit scary to dive into and totally understand at first, but for the purposes of this video, it should be fairly simple. You're gonna to wanna to go to your identity and copy this string of code. This is going to configure your username. Go back to your terminal. Again, I'm using Git Cracking Client. Paste it and then enter your name. Then hit enter. Okay, go back to the git book, copy this next string of code. This is gonna configure your email. Now I'm just gonna use the John Doe example and hit enter, but you'll just put in your own email. Okay, 
Now you should have git configured properly. In order to make sure that you've done this correctly, run git config dash dash list. Hit enter. Okay, you'll see that your username, I put in your name, so that's configured correctly, and then email, John Doe at example.com. Perfect, so now you have Git downloaded, installed on your Windows device and configured. So go ahead and get started on your next project. Thanks for tuning into this video. Git Kraken has a lot of great resources if you're just starting out learning Git, and I encourage you to take a look at those. See you next time.